Shader programming is a very distinct part of game development. Opposite to almost all of the other programming performed in Unity, shaders use an entirely different programming language and a different way of thinking about code. Writing shaders is all about a visualization of mathematics. Shaders use math to transform a series of numbers and textures into beautiful images we all enjoy while playing games. Those transformations happen in something called rendering pipeline. Rendering pipeline is a series of steps that graphical systems need to perform in order to render a 3D scene, which consists of models in 3D space, to a 2D image on the screen. Modern graphical cards use a freely programmable pipelines. This control is programmed by using shaders, which allow access to some of the rendering pipeline steps. The most important and the most used shaders are vertex and fragment shaders. The most primitive shader type in Unity is called vertex fragment shader, which is exactly letting us program those rendering steps in a single program. But there are a lot more types of shaders. We will talk about them in the future videos. Let's take a look at rendering pipeline steps and where shaders come into play. Let's use OpenGL pipeline as an example. DirectX pipeline is a little bit different and some of the steps might differ, but from the high level perspective, they are very similar. Vertex specification, the first step, lists all vertex data contained within a 3D space model. Vertices have to define a position, but they can also contain such values as color, texture cords, called UVs, etc. Vertex shader, first pipeline step where we can access and modify. Vertex shader is a program which, simply put, manipulates vertices. We can move, rotate or even animate using time. The ultimate goal is to calculate the final vertex positions. The program is called once for every vertex, so the more vertices in your scene, the more expensive running the vertex shader will be. Next step, desolation. An optional step which will divide mesh into more triangles, adding additional vertices. This is commonly used when doing, for example, snow track effects. Whenever we want to do a snow track, we can tessellate part of the mesh and move vertices down to create a carve in the snow. Geometry shader, also an optional stage. This shader works with primitives. It takes one primitive and outputs zero or more primitives by adding or removing vertices. For example, we can take one triangle and modify it to be a rectangle consisting of two triangles by adding just one single vertex. Next step, vertex post-processing, stage where we are using a scene camera to project our scene into something called a view space. This stage is also performing clipping, which will discard all vertices that are outside of the first view of our camera. This is a fixed step and we don't have much control over it. Primitive assembly, this stage collects all vertex data into an ordered sequence of simple primitives, lines, points and triangles. Next step, rasterization. Now that we have our scene transformed into view space, consisting of simple primitives with the data calculated, we can transform it into a 2D image consisting of fragments. Fragments are what we would call a candidate for a pixel. The data, like position, UV, color of each fragment, is calculated using interpolated output of vertex shader. So if you would have a rectangle and we would like to visualize color of each pixel using vertex positions, we would end up with such a gradient. Next part, fragment shader, also called pixel shader. This user written program calculates the color of each fragment user sees on the screen. The fragment shader runs for each fragment in the geometry. The job of the fragment shader is to determine the final color of each fragment. The more fragments a geometry has, meaning the bigger it is on the screen, the more expensive it will be. So effects like lighting are calculated in here. And the last part, per sample operations, there are few tests that are performed based on user has activated them or not. Some of these tests 
for example are stencil tests or depth tests. We will talk about them in the future videos. So that's how the render pipeline works in a high level overview. I hope it will help us to understand what and when shaders is performing its job. The next video will be about shaders in Unity, types of shaders and the structure of a simple vertex fragment shader. I hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe if you like my content. Also leave a comment, I'm happy to answer all your questions. Take care.